Recently I launched my first ever glitch texture pack and somebody asked me, how did you do that? How did you make these, Dave? I make them a bunch of different ways, but today I'm gonna show you how to do one by yourself and you don't need a single image editing app except for whatever's native on your computer. Let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery and I'm an artist and designer and I'm like get glitchy today. Glitchy. But not before I give a shout out to my friend Adam Ludeke of thepostlist.com because he came by and dropped off an order specifically to me. I mean, I ordered it, he brought it by the house and it's this shirt right here. He makes these great uh, t-shirt designs and poster designs, you know, kind of like all like sometimes surf, sometimes camping, sometimes lifestyle. Some really great, cool uh, designer shirts and you should go check them out. Find them at theposterlist.com. I'll put a link in the description, but check out this one. It's a, it's kind of cool. It's got a surfboard, kind of like, I don't know if you've seen it, but you know, I've got, but it's got a surfboard and it's got even a pocket for my snacks. I don't have any snacks. If I had some snacks, they would go in the pocket. Go check them out and tell them I sent you. That is not a sponsored post, by the way. That's just me doing, you know, the homie thing. I'm just, you know, giving, giving him a pound, giving him a like, hey, give him a shout out because he needs you to go buy a new shirt or two from him. The only reason you shouldn't be buying your shirts from Adam at the poster list is if you're gonna go buy them from me. Or you could buy one from him and buy one from me or buy 10 from him and buy 10 from me. It's totally okay. We, we, neither one of us would be mad at you for that. Anyway, let's get back to the glitchiness into the screen. So what we've got here is an image that I created. Of course, I did this in a Affinity Photo. You don't necessarily need to do this. I just wanted to make this kind of a uh, collage montage thing. You can use any RGB JPEG that you have around and you can do this. I like this one because it's it's almost got this double exposure already which will lend itself to kind of like the glitchiness to it. It's very gritty, it's very grainy already and so I figured that would be a good image to start glitching out. But we're gonna put away the affinity photo for now and we're just gonna go strictly with what I've got going on here. You just need the image as it is right here. I've got this set up uh, just as like single panels, but so that you can see all the images as they pop up because I'm gonna be saving them as I go. It's important to be able to see what you're working on because you're not gonna have any other way to see this because of this process. The only thing you really need here is you need to be able to see the image and it can be any way like this, or it can be like a, you know, whatever image viewing app that you might have on your computer. And then you need a text editor like text edit on Mac or whatever they have it on PC. Simple, basic one that can do just straight up text format only. Uh, you don't want any rich text. It's just, you need something that can just edit text and I'll show you why. If I take my image right here and I drag it down to my text edit and just let it go, it's gonna pull up my file as the text. It's kind of crazy how this works, but that's it. This is all the data behind this image as is. It's complete and total gimmerish. You wouldn't know anything from anything when you're looking at this. But uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's it, this is basically the code that says this pixel is this color, that pixel is that color, that pixel and that line is like that. And all of that can change in an instant merely by taking a bunch of stuff away. I'm gonna command X that right there. I'm gonna command S and I've already broke it. So I already broke it, but here's the thing. There's a certain amount of code up here in the top that's kind of like almost like the header text of any website. Sometimes I like to come down a little bit further and start there. So if I just select any of that, Command X, Command S, you saw that it kind of moved. Then I'm gonna go here and do it again. Just take a little bit of this. I'm just gonna straight up delete it, Command S, and I change that. Now I'm not 100% big on that because I don't want full coloration right now, so I'm gonna back that up. Command Z, Command Save again. Maybe take this one out instead. Command Save, and that moved it again. I don't know what any of these things mean. I don't know what any of this text does. I can't tell you what's gonna do what. It's all completely random. You see the color shift happened a little bit right there. And then as I move down, and I take, let's see, bigger spots, and does that, that's too much, that's not what I want. So I back that up, Command Z, and Command Save again. Maybe I'll take a little bit out of there and let's see what happens. That's kind of cool. Still getting that little bit of that shift over there. Now another thing I like to do is I go Command X, right? And then move further down and then do Command V, Command V, Command V. And that almost moved it back the other way. But then it's also, you can kind of see a little something happening up here. Also keep in mind that the code that you're seeing here, I'm kind of high at the top of the code still and a lot of the work is happening up in this upper section. So if I bring myself down into this image a little bit further, down, I say image, but the text, if I bring myself down into this text a little bit more, it happens a little bit lower. Now I don't exactly like that, so I'm gonna back that up and maybe I'll just take a little bit out of that. And it shifted a little bit right there. You can kind of see, and you can select big pieces and get that, or you can do like just one letter at a time. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That changed something right there. I just deleted one letter. 
And again, I can do Command-V because I know I have some code loaded. Change it like that. And I just move my way down the image. And I'm just going to keep going all the way down until I get to something that I feel is kind of cool. So here I have something going on, and it's not exactly perfect. I mean, it's not everything I want right now, but I'm gonna make some other adjustments. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this text right now because I'm not gonna be using that particular text anymore. I'm gonna double click this and have this open up in my image editing software, and then I'm just gonna rotate it and then save it just like that. And then bring that back in to the text editor because now the text has changed. The code has changed. And so now everything's different. And as you can kind of see right here, this code right here is kind of like the header. So I don't want to touch any of that, but I'm going to go down here. I'm actually going to, I want to make some adjustments in this middle section a little bit. So I'm going to go just above middle and start messing with this. See a little something happen right there. It's weird that sometimes like the biggest things won't do anything and the tiniest things will. Now something's weird going on. I'm not sure what's happening. So I'm just gonna double check it in Affinity Photo. And I say, not a whole lot's changing, but that's okay. So I know it's not breaking because sometimes it will break. Like, let's see, I'll just, I'm gonna break it just on purpose here. Let's see, it's not working. See, now it's like, it's like I'm not, I can't break it at all. That's weird. Usually I'm literally trying to break it on purpose and it's not letting me. Oh man, some crazy stuff is happening though. So I'm just going with it. Sometimes what'll happen is if you do break it, you'll get like a, an error message or it'll look like a broken file or something like that. It's really weird. This is actually an unusual position for me because usually something will happen here. Okay, so I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, I basically, I took that image and I actually resaved it as a different JPEG. As you can see down here, I've got two versions of it and this is the new version. And now it seems to be working. I don't know what happened. It was weird. It's like I broke it, but it didn't break. So, you know, that's good, I guess, but uh, <laughs> it wouldn't take, like none of the data would, would do anything to it. So we were good. So I'm gonna go ahead and X that out and save that. There we go, you see the change, oops. It, see, it changed a little bit, so that's kind of cool. Like I said, I wanna get down here into this middle section and see if I can't do some damage. And it's weird how sometimes the code will move it this way or that way, and you know, of course, I don't know which way it's gonna go. I don't know what color chips I'm gonna get. Ah, uh, see, now there we go. Now that is broken. And of course, we don't want that, so Command-Z. There we go. See, now it went the other direction. See, it's so weird how this works, and, and, and that's why it's just fun. And it can be tedious, uh, or rather time-consuming. <laughs> I don't want to say it's tedious, but uh, it's definitely, you know, something to play with. But one image will take a long time, and that's actually one of the reasons why it took me so long to get my glitch pack out, because I was doing exactly this, and one image would take me an hour to create. See, now I'm really starting to dig this. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Bring it into Affinity Photo. I'm gonna rotate it again. It's pretty cool, I kinda dig it. So I'm also going to take these two. This is one thing I wish you could do, is I wish you could just drag layers from one to the next. I'm gonna go Command-C, I'm gonna go Command-V, could group those, and I just wanna see what's happening here if I do this, if I do like a hard mix. Well, the images are not perfectly lined up. You can kinda see where she's at. And you get this little glitch thing happening just by bringing in the other image now of course i said you don't have to do this in any other app you can use it you can use it by itself if you have the basic image editing app in your particular computer you probably could do something like this of course you're going to be limited if you do have affinity photo you do have adobe photoshop or anything like that even um well maybe not because you do it in procreate you probably could do it in procreate but i would stick to the affinities and the uh, uh the adobe's and just play around with this until you get something cool so then you can resave this out go back in and do more glitch and then just keep going back and forth and back and forth and there's other techniques that you can use to add glitches especially once you're in affinity photo or once you're in adobe photoshop but you really don't need a lot you you really just need you know some patience and some you know tenacity to get the kind of look that you're looking for and maybe go back and forth and test things or if you don't want to do that you don't want to do any of that but you still want to have some glitch textures in your life i got a glitch texture pack for you that's available on my web shop link in the description it's only 10 bucks it's available right now glitch tastic it's 60 different textures 30 of them are full color 30 of them are monochromatic rgb they've got the rgb richness but they're monochromatic in color they're available right now in the shop, link in the description, thank you very much. So if you have any questions about anything we've done here so far, make sure you go down to the comments and shout it out. Say, Dave, what? While you're heading down there, hit that like button, okay? All right, I'm gonna get out. Guys, remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya. These are for you. These, 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 they're for you.
I'm just gonna sit here till you click one. 